Let's turn now, uh, before we get to the question period, to some factual situations that have been uh, rattling around a little in the news of late. Um, Philip, do you think electronic hacking into the emails of the Democratic National uh, Committee in 2016, before the last presidential election, is that comparable to the break-in at Watergate, uh, where the Republican, where the Republican, the plumbers crew planted microphones uh, at the in the offices of the Democratic National Committee? Yes, I think it's only comparable. I think it's virtually identical. Uh, the methods of the thieves are different, uh, but the ingenuity of burglars is always a cutting edge technology. <laughs> <coughs> Yes, I think it's, quite, it's very much the same. So if, if it could be shown that a president authorized or knew about in advance and, and didn't stop uh, such, a, such a, a hacking um, or encouraged it, colluded in it, that would be an impeachable offense in your view. I think that's right. I think the Nixon case does provide a precedent. Uh, I think it's important that we realize that doctrine and precedent are not confined to courts that the actions of the Senate in the House in impeachment, the actions of presidents in foreign policy and appointments, all provide constitutional precedents. Uh, but I'd say, I'd answer a question that, that you didn't ask. I'd say, of course you're right that a president who contrived to have the headquarters of the opposing party uh, burgled and their, their private documents purloined and published or used in some uh, intimidating way would be subject to impeachment. But I would also say from the Nixon precedent that a president who contrived to have uh, the actions of such burglars not investigated or who used the Covered instruments of the federal government right. to mislead the investigators, <clears throat> even if he, and I think this was true of Nixon, was not aware or had not directed or planned the original burglary, yes, I think that would be a predicate for impeachment. 